بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the next option uh, for the logging is something like sys syslog server logging now in this option we are going to tell the router to send those log messages to the external server or the external computer or pc which is going to run some application called syslog server applications so of course the log messages will be generated by the router so whatever the log messages will be exported to some external device now here we are going to run some kind of external software so it's going to show you all the log messages from where they are generated date and time of course if you're using some licensed programs you will have more options to log again so by default this logging is not enabled we need to log in we need to enable this sys logging by using a command called logging host we need to go to logging host and then we need to tell the ip address of that particular device so you can also do the same thing on the router too but make sure that from the router too you have reachability to to this particular device that is routing reachability of course in the production networks we do have routing configured uh, to provide the reachability between different networks so i'll show you this option here like uh, at this setup i'm using one com my physical computer which is using some software called tftpd so it's a free source tool which i have downloaded from the internet so here we need to select the appropriate interface like the first thing we need to select the syslog server because i want to use the syslog uh, syslog server application here and connect the correct interface which you are connecting to your gms3 so in my scenario i'm connecting this vm net 4 interface to and it is using the ip address of 10.1.1.10 so once you select the correct interface here i can go to my router and I can configure the router to generate the log messages. So I'm going to say simply logging host, and I want all the log messages to be sent to the uh, to the PC here. So you can see immediately you'll see some message here showing up. Whatever the message you see here, the same console messages it shows up here. And let's say I'm going to make some changes here. So. Let's say I'm trying to shut down this interface and I should see the interface should change state to down and again I'm going to make the interface back to up and you can see automatically whatever the log message is generated here the same messages you you normally see here. So in the production networks you can use some kind of license tools uh, with the license tools you will uh, you will have more options to filter the log messages because in the production network you have hundreds of devices and maybe some uh, different devices send the log messages to a single server so you can filter those messages and you can see those log messages when it occurred and also you can filter based on the date and time to see the actual events happening on the network so based on these messages you can at least come to know that this interface has been changed to down by some administrator so syslog is a common commonly used in the production network scenarios because uh, you generally want all the log messages to be sent to the external server where you have enough memory to save all those log messages now the last option of the log messages is like terminal logging now terminal logging is the equivalent of console logging so the only difference is the console logging is enabled by default nothing but terminal logging means anything you do from the VTP line. So let me take an example here. So I'm going to use a putty to initiate a telnet connection to the router 1 from our PC. So I'm, I'm going to open up the connection 10.1.1.1 on port number 23 with a telnet. And the password, I think the password So now I can see this is my VTY line and the screen here, whatever you see here, this is my console output. Now, so the above screen is like my console, the one which I'm using here, and this is my VTY line. So most in the production networks, we use VTY lines to log in. So let's say I'm going to make some changes 
on the interface. Let's say I'm trying to shut down. Of course, you can configure some EHRP and verify the neighborship and other things. And whenever I make any changes, you can see the it generates a log message. Of course, this log message is shown on the console screen. You can also see it on the syslog server if you have enabled the syslogs. But you don't see them on the PTYI because by default, the logging is disabled here. So mostly in the production networks, we access the device remotely. And whenever you are making any changes, we always want them to see uh, if like if you are trying to configure some EHRP, you expect the neighborship should come up. Or if you are making any changes to the interfaces or anything, you, you generally prefer to see these messages, uh, some, some basic informational messages. Now for that, we need to enable a terminal monitor command. So once I give the terminal monitor command, now if I make any changes, let's say I'm going to make the interface up. Now you can see the messages are displayed exactly the same way as you see on the console screen. So mostly in the production networks, it's recommended to disable the console logging by using a no login console command because mostly you don't do anything on the console because uh, most of the time you, we use always VT by line and we can enable this logging, the default logging which is disabled by using the terminal monitor command. But this terminal monitor command you have to give each and every time you you open a new connection because let's say if I close this putty connection and if I try to reopen it again you have to give the terminal monitor command once again if you want to see the log messages.